This is Andrew for The Chosen Prime with a video preview of a test shot slash production sample from DX9. This is their D11 Richtofen, which is their take on a masterpiece styled version of G1 Power Glide. And you can see this is a very nice homage of that G1 Autobot. Um, his code name Richtofen is the actual last name of the Red Baron. Red Baron was a famous World War I uh, fighter pilot. Hence what, uh, why Richtofen, you know, Red Baron makes sense for uh, a name for Power Glide here. Again, this is a test shot slash pre-production sample, so all I have is the figures and accessories. I don't have his box or his instructions. As far as his accessories, he does come with a little um, hand cannon that is similar to Masterpiece Bumblebee that he can hold. He comes with a little uh, alien mask here, and we'll show you this off in detail in a little bit that matches that one G1 episode. He comes with parts to build the little flight stand here. Um, and real quick, it's not uh, ratcheted. You actually pull it apart and kind of situate it and lock it into place, but he can use this to uh, fly in his uh, jet mode. He also comes with a little uh, human figure here, and if you're not familiar, this is the little, uh, the girl that loved Power Glide, um, done in the style as other Masterpiece figures, and we'll get to some close up detail for her in a little bit. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at Richtofen. Okay, a closer look here at Richtofen. You can see that DX9 is in a really nice job of homaging G1 Power Glide in the Masterpiece aesthetic. Very clean, robot mode overall. Um, all the jet mode kibble hides very well. This overall just looks like um, G1 Power Glide. He is a mix of plastic and paint, so this, this, uh, uh, his wings here is kind of a glossy red, but there's also some red paint on it to kind of help it match the Masterpiece aesthetic. And then on his arms here, where you can see it's a pearlescent white, um, is a quite nice difference um, from that red. And his forearms here are actually made out of die-cast metal. And he has die-cast elsewhere, like in his thighs, on his, his torso here. So basically, he's quite heavy. He's a four and a quarter ounces, so he's quite heavy. Um, he does have red paint here on the inner thigh um, due to transformation to his jet mode. But you really don't notice it too much when you're messing with the figure. But it, it is set up like that. And just overall, very clean um, robot mode here. You can see that the head just looks spot on to G1 Power Glide with the um, blue uh, painted eyes and the kind of uh, gray face mask. As far as articulation, his head here is on a swivel. So you can move it um, side to side. You can also have it tilt up and down. As far as the shoulders here, stiff um, rotation joint at the shoulder. You can lift this little piece up and you can lift this arm up at the shoulder, rotate at the uh, shoulder up there, double jointed elbow. The hands can rotate. The lower three fingers are pinned together. Then he's got a curled index finger, which is kind of surprising for a mini bot like this. He can rotate fully at his waist. Um, everything on this figure is really nice and stiff, which is kind of surprising for a test shot um, this, this early. If we move these little hip skirts out of the way, we can lift his leg up um, fully like that, pull it to the side, Rotate it back. He does have a 90 degree knee bend. He can rotate the upper thigh here as well as at the knee to kind of move the thigh a bit. The feet have a nice ankle tilt to them as well as a pivot forward and back. He's got a dedicated heel spur back here to kind of help him stand up if you need to. And I do recommend fully extending the heel spur all the way down so he does stand um, properly. But just a nice solid uh, power glide here from DX9. As far as Rick defends height here, he's a little under six inches um, to the top of his head here and just a little bit over for these wings. So he's a, a nice scale to match the other mini, Masterpiece mini bots that have been released so far. As far as his weapon, he can um, hold it into his hands. So just make sure you have the fingers opened up and it just slides into place. He can wield his little handgun um, quite easily. The uh, alien mask that he comes with, um, it actually has a peg um, on the back. So what you have to do, is you have to, and it's part of the transformation too, is kind of get a fingernail here on the little face mask here and just twist the uh, face around here. You can see how this panel flips around, um, making it red for the uh, vehicle mode, but also gives this that tab. So then we can take the uh, mask here, and it's a matter of just pegging it into that peg, and you can have his uh, mask from that one uh, um, G1 cartoon where Hoist goes to Hollywood. And so we can actually show him off with the uh, other mask figures. And so if you happen to have uh, X Transbots version of Masterpiece Hoist, uh, Payan, uh, Payan here came with the mask not only for their Hoist, but uh, Masterpiece uh, tracks here. 
And then you add in the mask that comes with uh, Rictofen here from DX9, you can kind of get these little comical scenes set up here, um, like they were in that one G1 cartoon where they all, you know, were actors and playing uh, space aliens, which is a funny little bonus, and it's funny to see these guys set up in a comical situation like this. Rictofen here also comes with a little mini figurine. This is Astoria from the uh, G1 episode, The Girl That Loved Power Glide. And you see she's done in the same um, style as other masterpiece uh, minifigures like this. Uh, no articulation, just, uh, you know, painted little figurine. And she essentially has the same height and styling as uh, other figurines. Like, this is uh, Raoul from Masterpiece Tracks. You can kind of see how they match um, side by side. And the other little funny gimmick that Power Glide course has is this little panel here that if we open this up, you can see he's got a little painted heart there on his chest like he did um, in that G1 episode. Again, nice little fun bonus here uh, for Rictofen. So as far as poses for Rictofen here, you can get some nice just standard uh, standing poses out of him. He's got enough uh, tilt and kind of pose to be able to just do basic uh, standing poses pretty nicely. But then if we move these little hip panels out of the way, we can um, bend his knees. And then the arms just have a lot of range of movement and are nice and stiff that he can get some um, dynamic kind of action shots and poses um, here in his robot mode if we get him uh, balanced correctly. So, you know, nice solid little uh, masterpiece power glide here from DX9. So let's go ahead and take a look at his transformation into his jet mode. To transform Rictofan into his jet mode, it is uh, fairly straightforward and everything seems to peg in and has a place. So we'll start with his arms here. So lift up on this uh, hand and you can see it lifts up the panel with it and then fold the fist in and collapse the panel. And again, a lot of the joints on this figure are very stiff and everything seems to have a nice locking point as far as where everything fits. So come to his chest here, pull it out. You see that it kind of pulls out like that. Rotate it 180 and then peg it back down. Come to his face and like we did for uh, the mask gimmick, kind of just grab a hold of the uh, face to kind of rotate the panel around and then just peg in the uh, front nose cone here. Come to his backpack back here. There's these little hooks. And these are actually what holds uh, the arms um, into the sides here. So you want to get these hooks and just kind of pull them out to the side so we can free up the backpack and the wings here. And we want to extend the backpack out of the way for now like that. So we come to his legs. We want to flip these uh, thighs 180. So grab it. Rotate it so the red's outward, and then rotate the leg back. So the, on both sides, so that the red uh, paint here is showing um, outward. Come to the back of the leg, unpeg these jet intakes, and you can see there's this little uh, hinge mechanism with this peg. And so make note when you're going back uh, to robot mode that you bring that peg up. We're gonna fold it down for now, and then pull the two halves of the jet intakes together to make the engine. Do the same thing on the other side, unpeg it, fold that tab down, peg that together. Uh, take the foot and we want to uh, flatten it out and then the heel spur will uh, fit up into the uh, leg here. So just push up on it and make note when you're going back um, to robot mode, like here we'll unpeg, normally this, uh, this wing part here pegs on the bottom of the foot, that when you're going back into robot mode that uh, before you try to bend the foot out, that this uh, wing here is kind of folded down so you have clearance to move it, otherwise it might get stuck. But we'll move that out to the side for now. So again, uh, take the foot, flatten it out, collapse this, get this ready to go. And then on one of these sides here is this little peg. You want to fold it out and get these two halves here um, ready to collapse together. But we don't want to peg them together yet. We want to feed um, this panel section um, down and through the middle here. So take this piece and make sure that it sits um, flat and then take this other half and feed it up through the middle. And then once you've got this fed and ready to go, go ahead and now collapse the legs, utilizing that one peg. And then this panel here should slide up and peg in, kind of finish off the underside of the jet here. Make sure the top is pegged in. These wings in the back will rotate to the side like this. The jet intakes will uh, go to the side. The arms, or the wings here, will fold back. And then there's a little tab here on each one of the wings that tabs into the side of the uh, 
the jet fuselage there. So you want to do that on both sides. Just kind of flatten them out. These little hooks that were for the backpack, we want to fold them in. So they are pegged in. And then similar to the G1 um, toy, we want to take the um, arm pieces here. And on each one of the arm pieces, there's this tab, the match, tab hole that matches this tab. That we want to rotate, collapse it, and then peg in the um, arm to the underside of the wing. Like so. So do the same thing on the other side. Rotate it all so that it all pegs into place. And you can close down that uh, landing gear. And here is Richtofen in his uh, jet mode. And here is Richtofen's very nice uh, G1 styled um, A10 Thunderbolt Warthog jet mode. Very evocative of the original G1 uh, toy version of Powerglide here. Um, nice bits of panel detailing kind of throughout. And just overall everything pegs together nice and securely, nice and solidly. Just a cool looking version of uh, G1 Powerglide done on a masterpiece scale. So he does have uh, multiple sets of landing gear. So this primary one is this piece down here. And then he's got one up under his uh, nose cone, so opening up the chest flap here. We've opened it up and then we can flip out this um, landing gear and close this back up. And that gives him the two, but that really doesn't let him balance too well. So yes, you can take, there's ones hidden here in the arms that we can open up. And just slide them down. And here is Richtofen with his uh, landing gear extended. And you can see that he rolls just fine on all four uh, wheels there. And it just looks like a really nice version of that uh, Warthog jet. If you like, you can take his uh, pistol and there's a little tab here on this one side that matches the uh, tab that we use for the mask here on the underside so we can just peg in um, the gun here the underside so you can have him have his cannon kind of like a warthog uh, does um, there on the front and then alternatively if you like if we uh, hide most of these landing gear and fold them away everything except for the main one here We can then bring in the uh, flight stand here. And it's got a little square uh, piece here that can be used to uh, peg in into that one landing gear there and you can hold him up on that part. This stand, again, is not ratcheted. Um, it's got, it's got te groove teeth, so it's meant to just kind of peg in and lock and you just kind of compress. You have to pull them apart every time you want to kind of move it. But in addition to this square one, that kind of holds his landing gear. He also comes with kind of a, a thinner a port here as well as a thicker um, port. Now I'm not quite sure why they provide these additional ones, maybe for other figures, because uh, there's no ports on Richtofen here that match um, these sizes. So maybe future uh, um, DX9 releases will utilize this uh, 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 flight stand with different figures. But we'll go ahead and we'll have him uh, hook up and here he is mounted on that fly stand, just, you know, kind of cupped around his uh, one main landing gear. Nice little bonus that DX9 threw in here for uh, this version of Powerglide. And he does, I mean, he's, that's pretty balanced, and you do have a little bit of options as far as posing um, the stand. So it's a nice little uh, extra that they added. So let's go ahead and take a look at his comparisons for uh, Rick Defend here. Robo comparisons for Rick Defend here with other Masby styled versions of G1 Minibots. On the left, we've got Toy World's Wave Break slash Masby Sea Spray. Uh, Toy World Space Racer slash Cosmos, Rick Defun, the official Masterpiece Bumblebee. We've got Bad Cube's Grump slash their Masterpiece Gears. And here's Fans Toys version of Sea Spray uh, Spin Drift. You can see how they all kind of stack up um, height wise. Now, according to the original Season 2 kind of scale chart for Power Glide here, Power Glide and, and uh, Sea Spray and Cosmos were taller figures than the original kind of car mini bots. Um, if you actually look at the, some of the sheets, um, Bumblebee. Is actually a full Power Glide head shorter than a Power Glide. So this one from DX9 does match the scale kind of set um, by the show. And I think you can see here, stylistically, he looks good amongst uh, other Masterpiece Autobots, whether they are, you know, third party variants, you know, the larger versions of Sea Spray, or the official product um, like uh, Masterpiece Bumblebee here um, to his right. And comparing alternate modes. Now, mind you, Power Glide's uh, jet mode in the G1 cartoon was a little awkward. 
you know, a little out of scale compared to his uh, mini bot size. But here you can kind of see just how his uh, his toy size kind of matches up here with other uh, Master Brace uh, mini bots. Comparing Rick Defend here with a different larger range of official Masterpiece Autobots. We've got the Golden Standard MP10 Optimus Prime, Masterpiece Ratchet, Masterpiece Wheeljack, Rick Defend, and Masterpiece Bumblebee. As you can see here, um, this version of Power Glide fits in right alongside other uh, Masterpiece figures here. It looks like a really nice version, you know, of a G1 uh, Masterpiece Power Glide. And alternate mode comparisons. Once more, a Power Glide to Jet Mode has always been an awkward size um, compared to other Autobots. But here you can see that stylistically, at least he matches um, other official Masterpiece Autobots. Some final thoughts here for DX9's D11 Rictofan, or their take on a Masterpiece style version of G1 Power Glide. Um, I'm pretty impressed with what uh, DX9 has done here to give us this, uh, you know, this Masterpiece Power Glide. It's, uh, the design is there, the build is there, even in its pre-production form. It's a nice, um, fun figure. Matches other Masterpiece Autobots. And then when you go to the transformation, the transformation is actually kind of fun, you know, unlike some of the other um, third-party Masterpiece uh, mini bots that we've gotten. This is actually a, an, a playable um, toy. And then you get nice fun accessories like the Storia figure, the mask, the alien mask, the uh, flight stand, etc. Now again, this is a pre-production -pre sample, so I'm certain uh, things may change, like some of the paint um, might get cleaned up and overall just the overall get nice bit of uh, fit and polish before we get the final release. So Rick Defan here is currently up for pre-order the Chosen Prime. I assume with the way that this uh, figure feels like in hand, he uh, the retail version is not very far out. So if you want to add this guy to your collection, um, I do recommend getting your pre-orders in. To me, this is my uh, Masterpiece of Power Glides. Take care.